and wrong. This is the Modern Eater Show. Piping hot and delicious. The Modern Eater. Food, 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 food. Come and get it. And now your hosts. All right, you're hot. I'm back, Jay Parker and Brian Freeman. Oh, yes. Yes, it is, and here we are, the Modern Eater Show on the air everywhere. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Little Rich Snyder, what do you say, boys? We are in the house. Uh, it was a challenge it, today. It. Live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, and this is really, uh, you know, the voice of hospitality. So where do we begin as we uh, come through Thanksgiving? I hope everybody's well with that. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of times, so, some challenges with Thanksgiving. You deal with family or no family, and... A lot to manage and juggle throughout the holidays. Stress, I know. You'd think it'd be a a, a less stressful type of event. You haven't been around my family. (laughs) Your family? You got a good family. I got a good family. It's It's just family. Sometimes they can stress you out, man. It's always and then work. Expectations. All that. It's uh, it's always the uncle. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uncle Daddy. One uncle. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uncle Daddy. (laughs) It's always that one uncle. Yo, Rich, you, talk, you, you talked about an a uncle that you had growing up. You know, that was one of those uncles who was like, he, he had to cut everybody down, tear them to pieces, uh, diminish them to make himself feel better. You had a lot of that. Yeah. And, uh, the cl- conflicting personalities in, in your family. Oh, yeah, and it's a pressure cooker because everyone has to come together. The expectation is, oh, let's all have this fun. And many times there's many different personalities, types of senses of humor, and uh, sometimes it, it clashes. We're going to have a show. I, th- I think it's a, a great show that we have coming up for you. Again, live on Facebook. Just search out The Modern Eater. You can check us out on Facebook uh, from Studio Kitchen Colorado. If you make your way over to there on Facebook, Studio Kitchen Colorado, go ahead and like that. And um, as we're live, I always try and do this because as I'm looking, Jay, we're live on Facebook. We yep, we've got them dialed in here, folks. You, you want to go there and invite your friends. I'm just going to share the word timeline. A big show tonight. We've got the return of the Bee Man, Nick French in Colorado Hemp Honey. Hemp Honey, what? Uh, We're going to try some delicious honey here and talk about um, the bees, what the bees are up to right now. I'm looking forward to that. Also, uh, it is the reason for the season. And when you think of that, it's more or less of how how can you give, you know, rather than receive. And, Rich, uh, every year, I don't know how many annual this is for you, but you head on over to Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. and um, you, just, you just like to feel, you know, so just when you think your life, you know, might have some challenges, may be a little bad, or you have some curveballs, mm-hmm. you see what other people are going through, and then you say at the end of the day, shoot, I got this made. Well, it, it's, it's, it is definitely that. But, you know, going over there the last couple of years for uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I really don't say much about it because I do it more for myself than uh, screaming about it or anything like that. But when you see uh, hundreds of people that come through there, um, and none of them really want to be there on Thanksgiving, but if you can, you know, open up, and, and that's what our industry is about, that hospitality, bringing someone up. Um, it, it's amazing how many frowns turn into deep smiles of, of gratitude, and it's, uh, I, I love it. Well, they can't chase me out of there. They yeah. tried. And food's <laughs> one of those things, I mean, truly, when you're around food and you're getting nourished and people that you care about, um, it's one of those things where the, the, the barriers, the walls are broken down. So yeah. uh, joining us tonight is, uh, I, I don't want to even say new because she's been in the job for a little while, but the executive chef of Children's Hospital, Chef Ashley Tobeck, she's uh, cooking... I don't know, leftovers for us. To, it just seems appropriate. My, Ashley, as I, as I sit here and see the menu that you um, got together for us, it's, it's it kind of cool because I, I, I'm a traditional guy. I'll just take the leftovers and have what I had on Thanksgiving and not get too far outside the box. But we're making leftovers delicious with Chef Ashley Tobeck from Children's Hospital. And I think these leftovers are actually from Children's Hospital, too. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. Um, so that's cool. We're going to catch up with Ashley Tobeck in, in the kitchen at 7 p.m. Been looking forward to this one. And uh, in the house tonight is Alex Palmerton. Alex Parm- Palmerton. I yes. can get that right. The Fifth Sense is a uh, project that she's working on now and also Chow. Uh, Richie, Chow is something that's near and dear to your heart. Very much so. The Colorado Hospitality. You know, it's Now it's called Culinary Hospitality 
outreach and wellness. And it has to do with uh, the mental health, the uh, feeling sometimes that we get in our industry when we're trying to take care of all these people, that overwhelmed feeling. And it's, it's a magical, really, mission. It's incredible. Well, it gets down to, you know, a lot of times in hospitality, you put that face on because it's that servitude that you're talking about. And, yep. you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day long working and you're serving people and, you've got, and you're around all, you know, food, drinks, libations, people, it, it's an up beat environment, but then you get back down to real life. You know, here I am, yeah. I'm going home, and what am I left with? A lot of times in hospitality, you're left with a very empty feeling and loneliness, and so I think that as we discover in the next hour at 7 p.m. right here on the Modern Eater Show, we're going to dig into those types of issues and um, also just talk about, you know, What's the remedy? Is there yeah, one? Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to catching up with Alex on that one. Well, and Greg, don't you think it goes through so many different industries? Because we've changed in, in this country so much from a manufacturing and, mm -hmm. and livelihood, you know, what, where we get our money to a service industry. And that goes across so many of the, so many different platforms. I mean, think about it, all the people you talk mm -hmm. on the phone, all the people that work in retail, we, so much of what America has become today is pleasing other people. And sometimes a lot of those people sacrifice their own happiness. And so I, mm -hmm. I really commend Alex for what yeah. she's doing with, with Chow. Yeah. Can't that's wait a to segment that's to exciting. listen to. That's yeah. truly a segment to watch. 7 p.m. and you can watch it here um, on Facebook as well. The Tommy Knocker Brewery, I mean, talk about a staple of Colorado. Uh, one of these breweries that if you're heading up I-70 into the mountains, do yourself a favor and go to Tommy Knocker Brewery and Steve Enderhaus. Yes. Uh, is here with us tonight to talk about those delicious beers. And it's not just beers at Tommy Knocker because I always fill up on some delicious food. Well, they, well. and they brought some of their poppers here to share with us. Tonight. Oh, did they really? Yes, they did. Oh, that's fantastic. One so, of the original micros, too. Yes. Many people yeah. don't think about Many that. Many awards. Yeah. Holy the cow. The Tommy Knockers has been yeah. around a lot longer yeah. than a lot of these newer, newer people. Yeah. And doing a lot of great things. We, we were talking, Rich, today. Yeah. They just don't have beer. They have root beer and, as well, oh, cream that, soda. That root so. beer is to Do die Do we have for. any of that here? No. No, uh, I, I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him. Just the beer. No sweat. That's just another reason another, to get up yeah, to Idaho yeah. Springs and Tommy Knocker Brewery. So it, it, it's a full house tonight, and I can't wait. Um, kind of one of the highlights for me will be 7 o'clock, and I'm going to share some of uh, my holiday uh, I don't know. What, is, is it struggles? And, and you never want to put yourself out on, on an island to say, oh, uh, boo-hoo, look at me. But uh, this time of year is, is difficult for me. So mm -hmm. being around friends and family, uh, you know, you can, you can take it or not. Yeah. But um, choose the people wisely that you want to be around in your life in general. And I, I can't wait to talk more about that at 7 p.m. In the meantime and in between time, honey, it's on the menu. And should be on a lot of menu. I got some off the wall questions <laughs> that I want to ask Nick French Look about at this honey. Right. He's you know, got to lay down in front was... of us. Jay, do you have this honey on camera? Uh, here. Not, not, currently, I do not have the honey on <laughs> okay, camera. Man. We'll get but the honey we'll get on it. camera. Greg, I used it this morning not realizing that he was, I didn't check in with you guys. And there I was using his tangerine <laughs> this morning and some fruit uh, tea I picked up in China. Oh, really? I, yeah, just this morning, and it's awesome. Still on I'm the still, shelf. Yep, still on my, my I mean, cabinet. secret between us, and I don't know if Nick is listening right now, but we just have him back so that we can get some more honey <laughs> for a few more months, and then, and then um, once you we're know, out, we'll you, get Nick back in for you know, some more honey. That's a, it's Jay Parker here. That's a joke, but that thought goes through my head when I call. <laughs> Time I'm to like, re-up. Well, you know, yeah, listen, like, hey, do you need six of those in my car? You're all right coming in with them. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah, just bring them all inside. Then. So thank you, Children's Hospital and Ashley Tobeck. Chef, thank you. That means so much to us. We'll check in with Ashley at uh, 645 for In the Kitchen. What we'll do right now is we'll take a break. We'll come right back from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. You are listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Choose your power through Cyberland. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. You know, Belgian-style beers are getting more and more popular. How long we got, homie? And while a lot of breweries make the... Two minutes. Two Brews beers in Denver no live does here. all Belgian style. No What's up, Rob? We got in Kenny, brewmaster. And we do badass Belgian style beers like nobody else. From the classics to creative Belgian inspired styles, we have 15 on tap in our big tasting room and patio. Handcrafted wit beers, blondes, ambers, and saisons. High octane doubles, triples, and quads. 
plus sours, barrel aged beers, and special rare there bottle releases. What do we need? Do we, we have, have all the trucks every day? That we plus need here? Next door. I think everything's here. And your dog is welcome. Anybody Check us out at brewsbeers.com. Bruce Beers, spelled B R U Z, 1675 yeah, West up. 67th Avenue in North Denver. Your best choice for Belgian style badassery. Can I pour you one? Rocker Spirits. It's a distillery, it's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Chef Brother Rutt from 4 by Brother Rutt. All about the Oh. oh man, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. And also competing on season 15 of Top Chef. You are listening to the Bot 30 seconds. I Heart Radio. Hi everybody, it's Chef Terry from Bardo in Denver. <laughs> I'm also on season 15 of Top Chef Colorado. <laughs> and you are listening to the Modern Eater on I Heart Radio. I have been Mark Safe from uh, Romaine, Romaine Lettuce, uh, Brian. Yeah. I'm and okay. actually, no, you're, you're, everyone is okay, except in a few states. There's, uh, you know, a, a processor in California that's having an issue. I was kind of shocked when they said, okay, uh, don't sell romaine lettuce, don't eat it. If you have it, it, throw it, away. A sample too. Take it off the shelves. But as we go around to a lot of micro, uh, yeah. hydro, hydroponic well, yeah. and aquaponic farms that have, I mean, that's why when I look at hydroponics, and aquaponics. I look at something to where that environment is pristine. Well, you know what's crazy Those about this whole thing is e. it didn't happen in the field. Um, you know, both of these uh, situations happened in a processing facility. And by the way, it was a voluntary recall. And so everyone that threw away everything, it hasn't, we haven't had one case in organic. So if you were eating organic romaine, you were fine all the time. Um, and it's only happened, like I said, in California around the plant people have gotten sick and then in a few states in the midwest Back and east. northeast yeah and look so, who's being punished i know all, well the sad thing is is what no one thinks about is all the farmers that had to plow under their crops and right now you're in a transition period we're moving out of california down into arizona to the growing region changes in this winter time and uh so all these farmers that just planted something that takes 60 days to harvest are being asked to uh, oh. some of them you know, are being asked to plow it under. And that's the sad thing is, is because we don't think of how many people are really affected by this. Now, of course, I've you don't want anyone it. getting sick or dying. You know, don't get me wrong. You I'm would know harvest. better than me, but I've never seen a nationwide recall of any produce. Have you? Uh, you, did, you, you did. Spinach, baby spinach. There was a nationwide recall back in 2007 when I just started in the industry. Um, there was a nationwide recall of baby spinach, and they pulled it off of every shelf, everything. That was one of the last... Non-voluntary forced recalls. Um, Here, here's a question: What's this going to do to the price of romaine that comes back in? Oh, you should wait till you go to the grocery store because all of a sudden the price of all the other lettuces, because now everyone's trying to fill their There's shelves. There's got to be a correction. Oh, the, mm -hmm. all the other lettuces have gone through the roof. So farmers are right now. I mean, and, and you know, sometimes this is one of those things where I'm glad that the farmers are making all the extra money. There's a there's a pro and a con to this, obviously, because some of the farmers are making yeah. money to co cover the cost of plowing under that romaine sure. or losing the sales sure. of the romaine. So in a, in a way, yeah, like you say, Greg, it's yeah, there's correction. a correction to be had. And, yeah. Well, we should probably get to the real show over here. Yeah. Nick French is already doing, <laughs> doing it. All doing Greg, and open I like the door for he, samples. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Little Rich Snyder, great show for you tonight as you sit down with your El Tryptophan. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, oh, I'm, I'm in a turkey coma here. Uh, Nick French, glad to have you back on the show. Colorado Hemp Honey, welcome back to the Modern Eater Show, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Appreciate it. Oh, it's all good, man. You brought the, uh, the delightful, tasty treats from the bee, and honey is the name of your game. First of all, for those that aren't familiar with, with your company, start right from the beginning. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And um, what's your product? Yeah, I've been beekeeping for about 12 years now. Um, the last three and a half years producing Colorado hemp honey, which is uh, a raw honey infused with a full spectrum hemp extract. You probably heard of the CBDs, the latest sure. craze in supplements yep. and natural foods. Well, CBD is naturally occurring in hemp, so we use a, a full spectrum hemp extract. So it's 
two raw foods coming together. It's a whole food approach to it. And it's a way to engage our, our systems in our body to help us feel better. I wanted to ask that. So people are saying, okay, great, but why? Why? Well, why for us really is honey is such a versatile um, you know, food to use. You can use it in any way you want. You can put it in your tea, in your coffee. You can put it on your oats, put it on toast. You can use it for a marinade for salmon or chicken wings. Uh, but it's a way to incorporate hemp and cannabinoids and CBD specifically into your diet without taking another pill or a tincture or, or rubbing it on your elbow. Is there, a, I was going to ask, a, a, medicinal, a medicinal purpose to that CBD in the, in the hemp honey? Yeah, well, you're really engaging that system in our body that helps regulate you know, and restore balance in, in our bodies, helps to maintain sleep and appetite and pain and inflammation. All of those things are regulated by the endocannabinoid system. And you can supplement that system uh, with, with CBD. And we do it with honey because I'm a beekeeper. So that's yeah. uh, what we go Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Nick, I, let me jump in real well, quick. And, right, and, and Brian, as we get a little older and the wheels start falling off the bus. Well, you know, and that's you, where you I was going. The, yeah, the go medical the benical benefit of the cannabis. Cannabinoids. Cannabinoids. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just we'll pass on that word, but <laughs> but the reality is is our bodies produce this naturally. That's right. And that's something we've just learned about, and that it was always right in front of us. Can you talk about that? That's at all? right. I always tell people if your doctor's over forty five years old, he probably never studied the endocannabinoid system in medical school because uh, it has recently been discovered, and CBD and those other cannabinoids hit the receptors in our body are like a lock and a key, and it, and it makes those wonderful things happen in our body. Um, you know, pain and sleep and inflammation, and it really helps to restore balance. Well, and I love what you're doing with the honeys because what a lot of people don't realize is honey is a natural homeopathic remedy that you know, you're, you're, you're taking all of the allergens, all of the pollens from, from your environment, and that's why it's so important not to buy honey from another state or another country, because the reality is you you might get the sweetener effects from it, but you're not getting all the homeopathic, and and you know that better than others. You you guys are harvesting a lot of this right out of Parker, right? That's right. Yeah, about 25 miles from where we're standing right now. Uh, most all of our our hives, we've got about uh, at the peak of summer about 150 colonies, and it's really all about the bees. It's about uh, keeping bees healthy, producing good quality honey, and helping people feel better. Do you have a place that people can actually see this in action? Do you have enough hives in one central location that you give a little tour or anything like that, Nick? Well, we've been leasing a uh, farm for the last you know, nearly 12 years. The story about going over to your neighbor's house. Oh, that's right. And just by happenstance. Would you mind telling that story yeah, real quick? Because yeah. I think I it's really it. cool. Yeah. And so I've been interested in bees for a long time. And our neighbor kept bees. And my wife encouraged me, go down and knock on the door and see if he needs any help and you can learn the craft. And so I knocked on the door and at the right at that time, um, the lady answers the door and she says, uh, I say to her, I wanna learn beekeeping, do you need any help? And she said, wait right there, don't move. Um, and so she went and got her husband and the husband came out and he said, we were just talking about uh, what we were gonna do with the hives because he'd had back surgery, he couldn't lift all the equipment anymore. And so it was, it was kind of uh, the universe calling out to me that this yeah. was my calling. She wasn't uh, looking forward to her future. And you were like a little <laughs> angel that knocked yeah, on the door yeah. and said, I'll, I'll, I'll step in. What happened from there? So I ended up working for uh, a year with uh, the gentleman there. And I, ended up, I helped him harvest about 800 pounds of honey. And I was out there every day sweating it out in the bee suits in the dead of the summer, you know, 105 degree temperature days in a bee suit. Is not a lot of fun. This is like Mr. Miyagi's backyard. <laughs> oh, you know, you're like, oh my, yeah. I'm doing all this, way. but you learned a lot. Trial by fire. You sure. Just, the stings, the sweat, all of it. Yeah. It, and, and, and there is born a company. And there it was. You know, I found my love. You know, I spent a long time working in, in, in you know, the, the corporate world, and the bees were always calling me. When you start doing what you love, you never work another day in your life. I absolutely love what I do. I love working with bees. I love growing hemp and, and making these products. And I love hearing the feedback from people that are benefiting. Well, let's from get it. some feedback. Mike, what do you think of that? It just tasted some of it. Which one did he taste? Amazing. Um, the one with, um, what is that, uh, turmeric? The turmeric black pepper? Yes. I mean, you could cook with that. Yes. Yeah. Right? Really good. That's delicious. Amazing. 
Do you like the taste of that, Mike? Okay, I, Christmas is upon you, man. You might see something in your stocking. <laughs> I mean, per perfect gifts, truly, and you get turned on to this. But go through the assortment of, of the varieties of honey that you do have to offer. I'd love to. Yeah, we've got our raw relief, which is just the, the great raw honey with the, the hemp in it, so it's got a nice earthy taste. We have lemon stress less, which is the, the honey and the hemp and a little bit of a, a lemon organic essential oil. Tangerine Tranquility. Show me as you're uh, yeah, looking course. at these. So here, that's the raw relief there. Well, great. Yeah, if you uh, don't miss out, it's on Facebook Live right now to look at this. And great packaging as well. It is. And what's interesting is you really can taste a little bit of that hemp. I mean, it's just ever so slight in there. It's not, I mean, I, I think Nick describes it best a little earthy, um, but it's so slight. And that's what I really like because it's not overpowering. I've tasted some hemp products that taste really too much plant-based <laughs> for my flavor. Chewing on grass. Yeah, and I, I really appreciated what he did this morning for my tea. So, And, and, and not, ju not just for tea. I mean, sw sweetener all around. Yep. Uh, well, we were at Tangerine. He's on his next one now. He's showing us. What's this one now? This one's Ginger Soothe. Ginger's a really good one for the holidays because it helps with the digestive system. So if you're overindulging a little bit and you want to calm down that digestive system, you can throw this in your tea, put it in your coffee, just take a teaspoon right out of the jar. Nice. And I mean, he's got that healthy glow to him, too. I mean, you're 150 years old. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because I went to the rec center in our, our community, and as I walked through, they said, you're 108? <laughs> they had my, my date wrong in there. So sorry. <laughs> like Yoda. <laughs> Healthy Yoda. Um, you know, as we continue, and, I, and what I want to do is I take a quick break and talk about what, when I said, well, what's new in the bee world? And you're like, well, we're just hunkering down for winter. You know, what, what is it? They don't fly south, do they? And come back. <laughs> I, I'm, and no, no, right? No, yeah, they've no, got to no. stay alive. And then I have a, a, a couple more questions that I want to address as well. But I think this is a cool thing. First of all, before we do take that break, how can people find more information about Colorado hemp honey? Yeah, you can go to coloradohemphoney.com. Uh, there's a lot of great information out there on, you know, on our products. You can go to a, a store locator, find a store near you. Uh, anywhere out through Colorado and throughout the country. Hey, Mike, would you grab me a menu over there? This is cool. Ashley Tobeck, who's coming up in the In the Kitchen, Chef Ashley um, from Children's Hospital, said, you know, leftovers do not have to be what you ate on yeah. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, we, we can make these into delicious culinary delights, so I like this. And potato pancakes with eggs and spicy tomato sauces on the menu tonight. She made a turkey pot pie. Makes sense to me. I would have never done it yep. because laziness yep. always wins out with me. Yep. Yep. Um, obviously not lazy. Stuffing uh, is coming right up. She's doing, what, doing, Ashley, what are you doing with this stuffing? This is actually pretty ingenious of you. So the stuffing will become the bread for a croque monsieur sandwich. Stop it. Yes, so we'll uh, <laughs> put Dijon mustard and the ham and Gruyere cheese um, and sandwich that together and then we'll grill that and once the first side's grilled we'll flip it over and we'll add some bechamel and a little more of that Gruyere cheese so it gets all melty and bubbly and delicious. That's why she's the chef and I'm a talk show host. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, wow. Truly, that's, that's pretty cool. Pumpkin mousse I got to come back to you. This pumpkin mousse. You, she's pulling the, the pumpkin pie out of the crust. What, what are you doing? So, uh, mousse is essentially a lightened custard anyway, right? Pumpkin pie is a baked custard. So we're going to take the, the custard part of the pumpkin pie, and we're going to fold that with a traditional meringue and a traditional whipped cream, and we're going to make a mousse. We're going to add some ginger cookies and some of this delicious ginger honey that I've been tasting, and we're going to make a really delicious dessert. Wow. wow, Mike Drum. Don't you love that? You know, <laughs> that's, <laughs> exactly. that's it. <laughs> Chef this, Ashley. Uh, this is the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. These chefs are so creative as they come through Studio Kitchen Colorado week in and week out. We're going to take that break, take a turnaround, come right back to Studio Kitchen Colorado live on Facebook. Check us out there. We'll continue with Colorado Hemp Honey and Nick French right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. How long here? Actually, let me try to add all this time up. Okay. Photos and videos. Just search the modern eater. Thank you, fine sir. Three, three minutes to the live. Thank you. Dot com. Yes. 
Amazon's Black Friday sale is on now with deals in every department, low prices, and free shipping on millions of items. Whether you're prepping for a festive get-together, buying gifts, or simply getting a little something for yourself, we've got everything you need. Amazon's Black Friday sale. Shop now on Amazon. At CTW, we get that building teamwork takes more than trust falls. I did a trust fall once. They dropped me. Yelters. To better connect your teams to the people, files, and applications they need, let CTW implement G Suite by Google Cloud so they can collaborate from anywhere on a single secure platform. Sounds great. By the way, I would never drop you. Thank you, announcer man. IT orchestration by CDW. People who get it. Find out more at cdw.com slash Google. If you've got a business and need a website or need a graphic designer, F. Johnson Design does it all. Take the headache out of trying to build your own website or design graphics. Who has time for that? F. Johnson Design will get you up and running with a professional and great-looking website. Design sharp graphics to your specifications and have your site up faster than you think. Logo, package design, SEO coding, and more. F. Johnson Design did the Modern Eater's website. Go to themoderneater.com to check out some of their work. Reach out to F. Johnson Design at fjohnsondesign.com. Do you have the goods? Jay Parker here for The Goods Restaurant. About two minutes to the left. Restaurant that features gluten-free menu items, stop by The Goods. Whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, or even a meat lover, they've got something for everyone. Get started with the vegan gluten-free tacos, warm corn tortillas, wood oven roasted veggies, pickled onions, shaved radish, tomatillo, fresh cilantro, and a house-made vegan sour cream. Wow! How about the best burger on planet Earth? One half pound of Aspen Ridge beef, lettuce, tomato, pickles, and never any hormones, antibiotics, or steroids. I recommend Just getting the crispy number. rosemary fries. As a friendly neighborhood restaurant featuring dinner, brunch, and full bar with two daily happy hours, they truly care about you, the customer, and desire to provide an extraordinary dining experience for everyone. They are family and children friendly and even have a playroom for the little ones. The Goods, a friendly neighborhood restaurant who offer a wide menu of gluten-free, vegetarian, and vegan options. And they don't forget about the meat lovers with a staff that really cares. On East Colfax, directly connected to the Tattered Cover Bookstore. Hungry? TheGoodsRestaurant.com. Hey, it's Peter Allman with South River Aqua. 50 seconds to the live. Thanks, Farmer. I get the importance of conserving our limited water supply. Did you know Colorado is suffering from the most severe drought since 2012? Water shortages are very real, especially to Colorado farmers. Now here's the good news. Aquaponic farming uses 90% less water than traditional farming, while producing four and a half times 30 per square foot. Using traditional farming techniques, farmers would flood their fields with large quantities of water leaving much of this water underutilized and just plain wasted. But because aquaponics is a recirculating system, the only water used is what the plants uptake in some very minor evaporation. South River Aquaponics has been running a 55,000 gallon system year round for years, and we use less than 500 gallons of water per day. Education is very important to us here at South River Aquaponics. I invite you to learn more about aquaponics at South River Aquaponics. Right, yep, South River, I South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. Okay, back to the show momentarily in Colorado. Hemp Honey and Nick French. Looking forward to 645 with Chef Ashley Tobeck. Right now, uh, it, i got to talk to you about Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. A lot of people do live reads, and they talk about a sponsor, and they've got a big sheet of paper. I have a phone number and a name, and that's all I need because Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, they do the right things. What is A-Plus Beverage Solutions? A-Plus Beverage Solutions is the standard of installing tap lines and maintenance of tap lines. The brewer wants the beer to taste exactly how they brewed it, the, the exact way that they want the consumer to taste it. If you're pouring tacky, inefficient beer, what are you doing, boys? You're pouring, pouring your, your money, money down, down the drain. drain. Don't pour your money down the drain. Don't be one of those tacky guys that's pouring that beer out into a pitcher. The foam is over, overwhelming, and you push that out, and then you pour it into a cup, and then you serve it to your customer. You're not going to stay in business very long. And that's why I implore you to get a hold of Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Grab a pin. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Ciao, it's Elise Wiggins. Okay, I'm going to play a little music after this. Tizella, the chef of the year from Eater Denver. One more time, one more time. And you are listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. All right, back at it, doing it up right on Facebook Live. 
If you check it out, we've got some good folks that are checking in with us tonight. We Joan. appreciate you hanging out. Is Joan, Joan Brewster, Brewster on there? Joan Brewster, the queen. Of <laughs> the queen as she exit out, exits out of the executive director position of the Colorado Chefs Association. She is heading into the Master Chefs. So Joan Brewster, Brandon Camp, thank you, my brother. Actually have some lady Alex and uh, Brittany are enjoying your delicious um, Colorado wine here. From, oh, pouring another glass right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, as well it should be because um, you, you really want to taste this wine from uh, Kingsman Estates Winery here I, locally in Colorado. And i got to tell you that what a great, great wine for being a local wine. I mean, we don't give props to our local guys. See, I want to dispel that, all that. I don't ever I want that to come out. For being a local wine, it's I actually know, pretty know. good. Uh, come on, man. Well, I mean, uh, some come of us on, are a man. snob. I mean, some of us, uh, I like everything local, but I definitely like my champagne from France. Well, listen, <laughs> Jay, Jay Parker here, I think it's a state of mind when it comes to that, you know, and that's, and that's why you say it like that is because traditionally when you think wine, you don't think uh, Colorado necessarily, mm -hmm. right? So that's part of our job is to open people's eyes to say, hey, listen, you know, okay, you're not thinking wine when you think Colorado. That's fine. But here's why you should open your mind up a little bit is because they are making all Colorado wine. And some people think, yeah, but they're getting the grapes from California and they're getting the grapes from, uh, you know, Fran overseas. It's like, well, yeah, they do that too. But there are places like Kingman Estates Winery that are growing all, their, all the grapes here, making everything inside of Colorado. Well yes, said. It is and Colorado. But side note, Small Business Saturday. Please support local. I and mean, we have so many great people, product, services that you can get right Right here in Colorado, and you're crazy not to. I actually find it to be an obligation of mine. If somebody has a, a product or service that I'm able to use, um, it's, it's my obligation to be able to support my neighbors because let's yeah. face it, if we can't support each other, who else is going to do that? Well, Greg, yep. you know we're innovators, though, because both of the things that we've done with with other products like wine, and one of the things, Jay, I, I was hoping you tagged on is, is the fact we're the first to put wine in a can. That started in Colorado with Infinite Monkey. And no, not a lot of people think about that. Small business. Well, let me, drop, let me drop this on you. Drop then. it in uh, here. Babe. Kingman Estates Winery that we were just speaking of, and Brandon Camp, or, uh, uh, an immediate friend of the show, is the first all-Colorado winery to put their wine in a box. Bingo. That's what I'm talking about, boss, right Man, there. Man, just <laughs> dropping knowledge Gosh. like it's college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Samantha New, how are you, Chef? Uh, Chef Paul Huddleston, uh, thanks for tuning in on Facebook Live. Violet Krebs, hope you and Klaus are having a good time tonight. Uh, Robin, she couldn't be here tonight. Oh, this is great. Just a community of people. Chef Jeff Jabot, you did a great job last week. And there she is, Joan Brewster. So appreciate all you guys. Uh, good shout out. This isn't bad for Colorado honey, man. <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> oh, wine and Get honey are very similar. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> These bees, man. I mean, those California bees taste much. Come on. <laughs> well, wait, though. He didn't even talk about We haven't dug in with Nick because Nick's doing... Coffee. Colorado hemp honey. He's doing coffee, oh, though. Oh, yeah. He's doing, we got to get up on his new stuff. That's a surprise. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I want to support you He's on the website. Here. He does no, 10 he minutes of research yeah, he hates before us. Before the show. Yeah. <laughs> Let's finish up with this and then happy to talk about any other endeavors that you're doing. You said the bees. The, what are the bees going through this time of year? Well, this time of year is uh, we're getting into a no peak time where we, we put them to bed for the winter. They, they really just hunker down. And hopefully they've got enough honey to get them through the winter so they can come out in the spring surviving. I'm trying to think of what that looks like. Please don't hold this against me because I was a kid. But when we were kids, let's face it, we froze bees for about 10 minutes and then put a little string around them, <laughs> let them thaw out, and the bees Whoa. were running around on leashes. Wow. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's what we did. I, I can't believe you, you just didn't said do that, that on radio. Jay. Yeah, you didn't do that. Um, <laughs> I mean, well, listen, when he said I, when we were kids, I instantly go to like magnifying glass or, you know, I mean, just something. No, we weren't. But that that is, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm not Is that what you're doing, Nick? Tell me. Are you putting them on strings? <laughs> we are definitely not putting them on strings. <laughs> that lasso. Yeah. I mean. That. There's, there's a bee crying out there in the world somewhere right now because yeah, you said that. <laughs> one of his cousins was <laughs> one of Jay, No, was they, were, they were perfectly unharmed. And then we let them go. It was catch and release. With the strings. Catch, no, freeze, and release. <laughs> what does that look like as far as just getting the bees ready for bed? Yeah, well, up, coming up into the fall, what we do is we make sure they have enough honey of their own to get them through the winter which is about 135 pounds of honey 
Um, we make sure that they're healthy, that, you know, that their mite number, or the mites that affect the bees are, the count on those are low so that uh, they don't go into the winter with a bunch of disease and pests in the hive. Well, and if they don't have enough honey, what do you give them? Well, we supplement them with sugar syrup. Yeah, this past year was a big, it was really warm. So it was, a, it was a season where we had to really supplement, feed them all winter long. And we make up pollen patties and all kinds of food for them to help them out. So it seems very modern. And I can imagine that there was a time before this. What, what did bees do before all of this pampering? <laughs> they did just fine Truly. without us. Really? Yeah. 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 Strange. That's really strange, yeah, Nick. Are you sure without they did right. okay with, without us? Uh, they, they were probably struggling <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Condos and stuff, they didn't yeah. have all that, you know. Well, I, I just well, picture these bees inside of Nick's house, you know, <laughs> like, don't go downstairs, you know, it's at 72 yeah. degrees. And because of your story, I picture him in his house on leashes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, make sure you walk your bees, you know, uh, they need their exercise. Another, another just dumb question. I love to ask the dumb question. Can you eat a bee? Is well, there, there's not a real, a real market for it. I mean, maybe not? crickets. Crickets okay, is a big market for crickets. You know, I'm wondering, can you eat a bee? Well, what's what interesting, though, is, is what, there is some uses for the bee sting. Oh, yeah. In, in, um, and that we found. And it's sad because when they sting, they die. But um, we have found that there are... I'll let you. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring the intro in for bee, Nick. Yeah, bee venom therapy. It's huge. I, I've used it on myself. I've got, like, beekeeper's elbow. You heard tennis elbow? You do mm -hmm. not. I do. I have beekeeper's elbow. You know, when I'm working 100 hives, it wreaks havoc. So I'll take a few bees and sting my elbow. You will not. Yes. I didn't yes. find I, that we've on his got website to, there, We've got to get a video of that, Jay. We've, we've been saying for a <laughs> long time now that we need, we're we're we need to get up the there spring. to take a tour. Um, Here's the thing. You, you've is been stung a lot? I'd give you my arm before I'd let you sting me with anything. Well, you really? Well, Come on, like, I mean, It's I, just I, a bee sting. It goes away. Yeah. Well, there's four of us and only one of him. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but some people don't react fondly to being, you know, if they're allergic. Oh, yeah, it can be deadly. There's yeah. no, no joke, yeah. yeah. But most no people don't, don't have you know, any life-threatening allergies against it. Yeah, that we could only hope, What, Jay. what are the states? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. How'd you, you know, yeah. how'd you get taken How'd you die? Uh, it, was a, it was a bee. It was a bee. It got me. Yeah, I know. I jumped off the roof and got stung by a bee on the way down. Uh, what, what is the bee climate here in Colorado and just kind of worldwide? Because you hear these things all the time where it's mm -hmm. like, we need to worry about the bees, you know, and things are going on. And, and you know, aside from... You know, Greg, the kids doing the things that they're doing. What can we do? You know, it was to, one B, <laughs> five, one, ten, one B, one, <laughs> ten B. Yeah, I kept them around. They kept, yeah, they kept. I kept the kept the strong time. ones around. You know, it was science. Science. I, I blame I, it on but, science. but seriously, Nick, you know, like because you hear that and you don't know how serious it is, and you, and and maybe you could talk for briefly about what they actually do for our ecosystem because a lot of people still don't still don't get it, myself included. You know. Oh, yeah. Well, when I, I go and I talk to a lot of kids in schools, usually I'll talk to about a thousand kids in schools throughout uh, Colorado every year. And I talk to them and I go in the room and the first thing I say is, who likes strawberries and blueberries and raspberries and apples and pears and pumpkins? Who likes to carve a pumpkin at Halloween? Who likes pumpkin pie? And they're all going crazy, mm -hmm. raising their hands. And I say, you can thank bees and pollinators for all of those foods. And I said, if you don't have bees and other pollinators, you're going to struggle finding these foods that you love. There's not going to be pumpkins. And, su and such a great point. You know, I was a kid in the class who was like, I freeze them. You know. <laughs> uh, which now, I, all right, I feel really I'm bad. starting to explain hey, I'm, a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm glad you came on tonight, Nick, because we have a little guilt it, going it on did, over there. It I like didn't that. progress in animals. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. Um, as, as we go, uh, you know, uh, first of all, you have a great array. Greg Holland back, 720-443-2817. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Call me. I'm lonely. <laughs> um, it's that time of year. You know, everybody needs somebody. My bees aren't enough. <laughs> but wait, pull, pull Nick back in because he's got this coffee that I want to hear about. Because infused coffee with honey is something totally different. I have a, a friend up north in Longmont that does it with special mushrooms. Um, and that, and the, the, oh. the Asian population jumps on all over it. They love it. It's, it's like um, lion's mane, good, healthy for the brain, infused with coffee. And Nick has a honey yeah. infused CBD a, honey. Yes, it's a hemp honey. Yeah, it's a, a hemp honey infused coffee. 
And so we're combining, you know, it, it's uh, complementary products to our honey line. It's something that goes well together. And so it's another way to get the, the hemp, and it's another way to get just good quality honey. Uh, are you, anyway. when are you infusing it? At the roasting level? At the roasting, or? yeah. When we roast it, you know, once those oils Got come it. out of the bean, yeah. that's when we add the hemp oils. That's so it, it, it kind of it blends together with the natural oils of the coffee bean, and then when it cools, those oils get sucked back inside of the bean. So some people can spray, you know, you can spray a CBD or hemp onto a product, but this is part of it because when it cools, like your turkey, when it cools, those, those juices go back inside. Wow. That, can I just push for more honey beer and more honey vodka? And I'm on you it. See I'm the, on it. You see the theme. I'm seeing a theme, a <laughs> trend here. I'm going with there. Uh, again, how can people find your product perfect for gifts and yourself? I mean, give yourself a gift. Give yourself a gift of health feeling better, better, the medicinal value, um, it's, it's off the charts. And this is something that uh, dons the dorset steps of my shelf. I keep it with my spices. Is that bad? It, no, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. These, honey, these honey sticks, man, I'm telling you what, these are the savior as far as you get up. You don't have time to eat everything that you want to eat, you know, and you put a couple of these in your pocket and you get a, some bingo, bango, ba- bongo right through the I day. I was going to say that about 10 minutes ago. My go-to is just to go get yourself a little spoonful, spoonful in yeah. the morning. I just can't remember to do that. You know, when I have these on the counter, I put and then I, I remember during the day that I need to consume things, you know, but I, for some reason, I have a hard time remembering a spoonful. Honey, nature's gift. That's right. Along with Nick and Nick French. <laughs> uh, Colorado <laughs> Ham Honey, thank you, sir. Thank you. So Thanks much for, for joining us in the kitchen. Uh, honey for all. All for one. So much. Honey here. for all. Thanks, honey. Yeah, that's right. That's the only <laughs> honey I'll be thanking. Yeah. <laughs> this year. I th- I'll thank myself, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank- I'll thank everybody. Chef Ashley Tobeck, she's working hard in the kitchen. I-, I hope she can sneak away. I think we can. I just told her. I said, uh, she's, she's, she's she, good yeah. to go. She's going to give Brian a, a this, side project. This worked out Oh, yeah. this is perfect. Anybody hungry in here? Anybody at all? Want to eat something? Wait till you see <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> How was Thanksgiving, my boy? Was it good? Oh, perfect. Rob's here with us in the house, too. All right, let's take a break. Come back in the kitchen is next. Truly in the kitchen from Studio Mm -hmm. Kitchen Colorado right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. How long is this break? iHeartRadio is your Christmas music app. No need to search for the perfect Christmas soundtrack. iHeartRadio is the only app you need for Christmas music. Our most popular Christmas station is iHeart Christmas. 100% Christmas favorites, all commercial free. North Pole Radio, hosted by the big man himself, Santa Claus, taking calls from kids and playing great Christmas music for the whole family. And iHeart Christmas classics, timeless and classic Christmas songs, all available right hey, now Jared, on how your long iHeart have? Radio app. Oh, sorry. I thought you heard me. It was a three and a half, and now it's at a 240. 240. At the Intrepid okay. Sojourner sorry. Beer Project. At Intrepid Sojourner, beer tells a story inspired by my adventures as a well-traveled archaeologist. My recipes draw inspiration from all over the world, from historical styles like Satis, Grazers, and Kvass, to adjunct beers inspired by flavors from international cuisines. My beers broaden the horizons of what beer can be. Explore basil IPA and Turkish coffee stout. Enjoy chai brown ale. Taste lavender tripel and the distinctive horchata milk stout. Thoughtfully source spices and herbs, enhance flavors inherent to indigenous beer styles. My sincere hope is that Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project will inspire adventure and wanderlust. Come visit the tap room and share your tales with friends and plan your next sojourn. Located at 925 West 8th Avenue in the heart of the Arts District on Santa Fe. For everything Intrepid, look us up online at sojournerbeers.com and remember to drink globally, locally. Hey Colorado, this is Brian Freeman, owner of Growers Organic and a host on the Modern Eater Talk Show. Growers Organic is a Colorado sourcing company who provides Colorado's greatest chefs with the best organic produce. I've been partnering with local and regional farms for the last 20 years and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. Chefs who receive the highest rating on Good Food 100 choose Growers Organic for their organic produce needs because we're experts at bridging the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Hey, it's Greg Holland back for Gluten-Free Things. Are you intolerant or sensitive to gluten? Or maybe you're a gluten-free lifestyler? Is 
One minute. It's because you've eliminated gluten from your diet. Are you missing the taste of foods that traditionally contain gluten? What if I told you that you can add breads, pizzas, muffins, cakes, cookies, waffles, croissants, English muffins, the list goes on right back to your menu. Gluten-Free Things is a local gluten-free and vegan bakery that reintroduces you to the foods you love. Owner John Irvin believes gluten-free shouldn't taste like the box that it's packaged in. Trust me when I tell you the products from his bakery in Arvada are fresh, flavorful, and masterly crafted, leaving you with a product that tastes like the real thing. Simply dirty. Okay. is located in Arvada on 64th and Sims across oh. the street from Arvada West High School. Check out their website Don't at glutenfreethings.com. You'll be amazed with the variety of gluten-free products they make. And chefs, don't leave your gluten-free restaurant guests without options. Contact John at info at glutenfreethings.com. That's info at glutenfreethings.com to see what he can do for you. Give him a shot. 11651 West 64th Avenue in Arvada. It's gluten-free things. Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Yeah. You're listening to the Modern Eater Show. The ultimate gourmet challenge. And it's time. Okay, you're hot. The Kitchen, brought to you by Gluten-Free Things, a dedicated gluten-free and vegan bakery in Arvada. All right, we're in business as we head into In the Kitchen. Truly In the Kitchen, it's Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Chef Ashley Tobex, she's like, that's going to turn up. You, you bet, you've got your sous chef in the I, kitchen. Here. I do, absolutely. I brought him with me tonight. He, <laughs> he makes an excellent sous chef, takes great instructions. <laughs> instructions, in the, I mean, that's half the battle. If you can just listen. Just listen. Yep. That's all. I'm yep. telling you what you need to do. Yep. That's fine. Uh, this is truly an honor and a pleasure because we love to catch up with Ashley. Um, chef, the executive chef at Children's Hospital, Chef Ashley Toback. Welcome back to the Modern Eater Show. Thanks, guys. I'm, I, I love the new kitchen. This is my, my like first the, time getting to cook in the kitchen. I'm, the new I'm having digs. a great day. Uh, we're coming along slowly, slowly but I mean, surely. I'm going to buy you some pots and pans for Christmas, I think. <laughs> we'll take them. <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, that's right. What's that song, Ain't, ain't Too Proud to Beg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hey, listen. I, I have a, I, listen, I have it. Yeah, I'll take it. W- what is it? What <laughs> sure. is, it? is it the flu? All right, that's I'll right. take it. Is it free? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the flu. If we yeah, can't thanks. use it, we'll sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. That's my motto. Can't use it, we'll sell it. It's a fun night as we come through the holidays, and this is a, a tough time of year for people. And um, let's jump right in. Children's Hospital, first of all, your first year during the holidays at Children's Hospital. At first blush, what are you seeing? Oh, you know, I think it's it's amazing to see all of the people that show up. Um, I, I had more staff than I could use on Thursday because everyone wanted to be able to be there to serve lunch. Um, we had a great time. Little Rich showed up and, uh, and helped out a little bit. We had a fantastic time. He told everybody where to go, and we served all of the good stuff. Um, all of our patients got to eat. Our association of volunteers actually pays for all of the guests and the families that are there to be able to come down to the cafeteria and get that traditional Thanksgiving meal. So so. Cool. That is cool. Well, yeah. when, when Little Rich tells me where to go, it's probably a little different than when he's greeting people. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> he, 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 he was on his best behavior. I was, I was sure pretty impressed. Was. It's one of those things to where you think you have problems. You, you, th- you, you think that you know, your, your world's coming to an end, and as you walk around with your healthy human body and you're just going through the motions of the day, um, go take a look at a child that's suffering, or, you know, either burns or cancer, or thing, things they don't even want to go through, and their attitudes, uh, the attitude of a child, it's... it's it's How contagious, brave. right? How brave they are. You have no problems. When, yeah. when my days get tough, when, when the kitchen gets hot and crazy, I, I run upstairs. I take trays with room service, and you get to see the kiddos and just the joy on their faces. But, you know, they get, it, it, it's a hospital tray of food, but they have so much fun with it. And well, love that but you do so it. much more, though, because, oh, I mean, that hospital has so many different facets to it. I mean, you guys even have your own radio station that the kids can come in and Someone's locked out of the bathroom. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, but I, but I, I mean, I did want to jump in we a do bit, have Ashley, keys because a lot of people don't realize how many different aspects there are to what you do. And how, I mean, you're in charge of like four to five different levels of food, not only for the hospital, for the staff, patients, Oh, absolutely. Everyone we, involved. We feed all of our patients all day long. Um, we have 37 different room service menus based on diets wow. and allergies That's that our patients incredible. have. Um, our patients can order live off of their TV with their TV remote from their room whenever they want. 
um, all day long. They can order whatever's on that menu, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all day. So we've got that going on on one side of the kitchen. We feed the staff up in our cafeteria. We have four or five different stations running every day. So you're going to find everything from your traditional meatloaf and mashed potatoes to uh, fish tacos to uh, tikka masala to whatever else you can come up with uh, in all of those stations in the cafe. So all of our staff get fed. Um, and we also do a, a, a pretty robust catering business within the hospital. So we make sure that everybody that has meetings and important things going on in the hospital are fed. Uh, we're, we're working on flu season right now. We're starting to get there. Hopefully everyone has gotten their flu shots and it's gonna be a light one for us this year. But um, we also work on sending up nourishment trays up to our staff lounges so that our nurses and everybody, when they get really busy and can't make it down to the cafe, have something to eat. Needed so much. Much. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and all the dietary restrictions. It's Think about how many different, no. oh, different, crazy. you know, little pockets that she has to fill for so many different, whether it's the kids or, I mean, what, staff. Here's a, here's yeah. a little secret. Uh, you can go in off the street and get a five dollar burger or something like that absolutely we you know we're we're one of the cheapest gigs in town if you if you want to come eat we we have a salad bar that has and uh, that's your you you created that salad bar yeah it's got a it's got a hot entree on it every day a build your own so we're doing things like um broth bowls and we did an awesome falafel bowl a couple of days ago and so anybody can really come in and eat um we'd love to have you say come say hello my mom is so cheap (laughs) <laughs> that she, if she's listening right now, she's writing this down. So, well, here's the, a question. The, the food is great. Hey, here's a question. I, yeah. <laughs> Ashley, how many, and I know this number because I asked when I was there, how many are on the staff at Children's Hospital? I, this we, blow your mind. So our, our entire network of care covers 18 different facilities. And among the entire network of care, we're looking at around 8,000 staff members total. Um, we have between five and 6,000 in the Anschutz building at any given time. On December 13th, I get the biggest challenge of my career. I get to feed every single one of those employees lunch in a three hour time span. So we've already started working on all of the, the fixings to go you with You just that. kicked my anxiety into high gear, <laughs> but you have a great staff as well. I have a fantastic team. Um, we've got 85 different staff members on our food service team, everywhere from the folks that answer the phone and talk to our patients and their families when they're ready to order food, to the people that wash the dishes and clean the floors at the end of the night, and every single one of them is absolutely fantastic. Sweet, yeah. successful, on point, classy. Yeah. Ashley Tobek, thank you so much. It's so cool to have you here in our kitchen. Thanks for having me, And now me, it's Greg. time to serve some food, right? Absolutely. We got all sorts of yummy stuff to have. Well, so I got to go make some pumpkin mousse so everybody can have dessert. We have a lot of kids here today, too. So we'll just get, get down on it. It looks so good over there, you guys. Um, you could see the food. She's great. Thank you so much, Ashley. And we're going to get back to this. Top of the hour, 7 p.m. is coming. And Alex Palmerton is coming up. The Fifth Sense and Chow. That'll be next as we continue right here from Studio Kitchen Colorado. Look us up on Facebook Live. We'd be uh, more than happy for you to join us in this culinary community as the voice of hospitality continues. I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans. I'm this premier. Right, I don't want to talk over you. So I don't want to... to protect you from unpredictable interest rates, our exclusive rate shield approval. First, we lock your interest rate for up to 90 days. Then, if rates go up, your rate stays locked. But if rates go down, your rate drops. Either way, you win. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. We could tell you that every woman loves jewelry, but at Jared, we know you don't care about every woman. You're only devoted to the one you love. With more exclusive Le'Veon pieces than any other jewelry store in the world, like the all-new Le'Veon Links of Love collection, Jared is the place to find a gift as extraordinary as she is. From November 19th to December 2nd, save $100 off any Le'Veon purchase. Get a promo code or find a store near you at jared.com and dare to be devoted. From all of us at Denver's Talk Station, have a great Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks for listening to 630 KHOW and iHeart Radio Station. KHOW Denver.
Brandon, can you hear me? Yep. What's that? He normally leaves the newscast muted. He just brings up the traffic and the front of the that scared me all of a sudden. Yep. Where did you get like But we are connected, aren't we, there, Jared? Yes, sir. We're all good. Uh, eight seconds so you guys can hear it again. Okay. Just like we're just in my office when you stop by. This report is a little by scary. Pete Kia of Littleton. Your Pete Kia. I know. It's a great idea. Well, one major hotspot in Denver Metro right now. It is on I-270 westbound after Vazquez. There's a crash there, and that has traffic backed up to Quebec. We're also seeing slow speeds on I-25 northbound through Larkspur. Up in the mountains, it's getting a little better, thankfully. CDOT has Look reopened I-70 eastbound, I east of Frisco, and at Silverthorne, I know. up to and the Eisenhower Tunnel, but I-70 so eastbound still remains closed through Eagle Canyon. Awesome. Awesome. And Loveland yeah. Pass also okay. remains yeah. closed in both directions. Yep. Can you hear it up a little bit? Yeah. Windy, a few okay. passing flurries, a little bit. Is it weird? <laughs> it is. A little. Get used to it. Which now you're going to be yakking to a lot of people. You're going to be talking to a lot of people. I'm Tammy V. Hill, 639. Nice. Nice. It's the Black Friday sales event at Peak. Kia with greatly specials on a new all-wheel drive Kia Sorento, the perfect Lining SUV for Colorado. Check it out at PeteKia.com. Here's the only way Alex could be any sweeter. Okay. What? So this is the only way you could get any sweeter. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet, Rich. Well, you. I don't know that that's appropriate, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> It's, a, it's the 7 o'clock hour, I think, yeah. I think we're all right. Oh, we are getting it's it. It's past 7. Time. Oh. oh. <laughs> I didn't even need to look at the watch. Clockwork. You can set your watch by that, my friend. <laughs> look what kind. Brian has a rule. No tequila before 7. He told me. I think that's a good rule. I told her only two glasses of wine before I speak. We're just see? Now we're just trying, trying, trying to get him to narrow it down to one time zone. <laughs> See, Alex is comfortable now. <laughs> That's right, 92%. No, Use this the headset's kind of focused. They bring you into a zone. Sitting at their current job. You'll have your no, I feel like a qualified candidates for any yeah. position you have available. Which my husband will find hilarious. Help. Go <laughs> What's your best go-to call? .com. That's um, iHeartWorks.com. This is Dan Kappas. I believe that talk <laughs> is cheap. Don't freak out, Alex, speaks but louder than words and results matter. So if you need a lawyer for a serious injury case or a wrongful death case, I respectfully request that you allow Allow me to I show you our firm's long history of outstanding well, I, I results. <laughs> we pursue righteous cases it, on a percentage fee cheese? basis. If you know, I've heard that. Give me a call at 303-770-551 or hit dancaplaslaw.com. That's dancaplaslaw.com. Ask Alexa to play 630K How on iHeartRadio. Then you can hear John Caldera tomorrow night at 5. Getting 630K How from iHeartRadio. If Denver's Boy, talking about good. it, you'll hear I know, it. On my it. leftovers do not look that good. You didn't tell me I was going to speak right when the paid advertisement. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those. Those of KHOW, oh, yeah, staff, I don't need management, or parent company, iHeartMedia right Incorporated. <laughs> I'm out of my tweet. It's time for the second course, hour number two of The Modern Eater. What, what are you hungry for? Here's to a meal we're all here for. Delicious and tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Hey, Jay, With your host, Greg your Hollenbeck, head, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. All right, yes, indeedy, Mr. Tweedy. Here it is, the second hour of The Modern Eater Show. Live on iHeartRadio, 630K, how locally and uh, worldwide on the web. All you have to do is look at us on Facebook.com. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, and Little Rich Schneider as we continue. Uh, hello, Chef Emma Nemechek on Facebook Live. We've got um, Christopher McAdams says, get him, Ashley. You know what, Christopher McAdams? Oh, she's busy cooking. Sean <laughs> Smiley um, Sean, I hope you're recovering. He got in a car accident, and um, uh, we wish you the I didn't hear. Is he okay? Best. Is he okay? Yeah, I, I think he, he had some busted up ribs, so I uh, hope you're doing better. Tuan Law joined us. Thank you. Sam News still there. And uh, my mom. My mom's watching. Patricia, Aww. did you hear what he said earlier? Please tell me you did. About the <laughs> I'm narking off my older brother here. Uh. <laughs> 
Let's see. And you heard that too, Patricia, right? My older brother. Um, <laughs> I just got a uh, instant message on Facebook. Hi, Greg. It's been quite a while. I was making a delivery and was wondering, did you grow up on Jackson Street? Sixth and Jackson. I did indeed. Yep. Grew up oh. on Sixth and Jackson Street here. So he's got a stalker. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Frank. Uh, thanks for that. I'll answer that. Um. Yeah, Frank, his phone number is 720. We can get that going again there. Uh, we're having a great time in Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Thanks for joining us tonight as we go on to uh, Alex Palmerton and the owner of Fifth Sense, The Fifth Sense, and uh, co-founder of Chow. Welcome to the Modern Eater Show. Thank you. Your I first feel so appearance. official in this headset. <laughs> you, yeah. you are official, and uh, you wear the headset well. Your Thank husband you. would be very proud. What do you want to say? Go Tennessee? <laughs> yeah, go Vols. Yeah, go Vols. <laughs> he's she a Georgia looked, fan. So she looks like a sports like commentator over here. I feel like I'm really... Like with the sports commentary. Yeah, and I know a lot about sports. So <laughs> I was in this. I was in the same room with Jay when when he was talking to Alex yesterday, and he goes, uh, "Is it Alexandra? You know, should I call you?" She said, that "That's my uh, internet." name because I'm tired of emails saying Mr. Palmerton. Well, that's how you know it's a salesperson. They're like, hello, Mr. Palmerton. And I'm like, I'm not buying whatever it is. Yeah, that's it. You don't know me. You did, you did zero research. I know. For someone in marketing, I'm sure that, that kind of stuff uh, sticks in your crow. It does. It does. It, it's not that hard to Google someone and see whether or not they have hair. Right. And spe <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of research. Oh, Alex. Uh, speaking of research. <laughs> um, it was funny because Jay said, oh, yeah, you know, we're looking at some of the stuff that you do. And you said, yeah, we're watching. The, uh, last I was watching the show. The, what do you think of this? What this craziness that we're doing here? Well, I think I'll have a better answer when I'm finished, but um, I like it so far. I don't like that you've served the food and then put a microphone in my face. I know, you want to eat. Uh, dinner is served. When I haven't really even figured out how to take a sip of my wine with this microphone in oh, my mouth. It's easy. You'll figure it out. Brian. Watch Brian. Yeah, yeah. Brian. <laughs> Check Brian out. I'm the, I'm the trainer when it comes to drinking on the show, Got so it. I can show you all about yeah. it, Alex. I am your young grasshopper. I'm ready to learn. Ah, very good. Very Just good. like Alice in L Wonderland, I am we're going to spend some time with you here. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. Um, first of all, talk about yourself for just a minute, just like a quick bio oh, of Alex. Yeah. Quick bio of Alex. Um, I was born in Tennessee, um, went to UNC Chapel Hill, um, lived in Atlanta for a couple years, did restaurant marketing in-house for some big restaurant groups down there. Um, and while I was doing that, you know, I was a full-time employee for a team that had 10 restaurants, a catering company, obviously a lot more revenue than your simple mom and pop restaurant. And I always wondered, you know, what do you do when you don't have 10 restaurants? How do you get marketing help? Mm -hmm. Like, do you have a friend do it? And I talked to a lot of people and it was a lot of the chef's wife is doing the Instagram, the owner's daughter's doing the Instagram. And that's great, um, but not always scalable. Um, so my husband and I moved out to Colorado about four years ago. And um, I just asked him if, he would be confident in me starting my own business because um, I was sick of asking the question. I wanted to answer it. So I uh, moved out here, didn't know anyone. I didn't have an apartment and started my company. Um, so started showing up to a lot of things like this. Um, worked for 303 for a year as their food editor. Um, shook a lot of hands. Didn't tell anyone that what I was doing on the side. Um, and after my year was up, I quit with them. And now I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients, um, small food restaurants, small food companies. Um, I do blogging, social media, email marketing, all that kind of stuff. It's so well, it's so needed because it's like, yes. okay, you do yes. what you do best. Cook, greet, hospitality, create menus. Right. I'll do what I do best. Right. I will focus and highlight all of the great things that you're doing seamlessly. Well, what I, mm -hmm. yeah, what I've learned is a lot of my clients, especially chefs, you know, they're exposed to all this cool stuff all the time that they forget that it's cool and they forget that their guests would be interested in knowing sure. like where the produce is from right. or what farmer they got the meat from. They're like, oh, I didn't realize that people would want a picture of my shipment of vegetables coming in. Right. Like, um, so it's really just pointing out the obvious because I, 
the stories are all there, you know. Yeah. It's just a matter yeah. of yeah. being like, oh, wow, people want to hear this. I always say yeah. if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to see it, <laughs> did it fall? Oh. Yeah. You don't know. So that's what mm -hmm. you're doing. You're capturing the tree. Yeah, I call it um, digital hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that that's the way that restaurant owners can really get it. I'm like, you know, you do these table touches. You're so attentive to guests. And then they walk out of the restaurant and it takes them seven clicks to call you. That's not, hospi that's not hospitality. That's inconvenience. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to tighten up the internet presence so that you can give guests a good experience in the restaurant, outside of the restaurant, on your website, in your store. I want to kind of put a, a, a great uh, exclamation mark on that. People that want yes. your services, how can they reach out and say, Alex, oh, can funny, you help you me? Um, I have a website. Great. Shocker. Um, it's the fifth sense.com. It's written as you see it on the screen, 5th if you're listening. So the 5th sense.com. Um, fill out the contact form. It's just me. I'm a one woman show. I find that my clients really like working with me specifically because I have the food and restaurant background. You know, they've hired a lot of marketing people in the past who are great marketers, but they don't know about food and they get a little frustrated having to retell how their business works over and over. So. It is just me, so if you fill out the contact form, you're going to be talking to me. So. Well, in full disclosure, you know, Growers Organic, when I met Alex, was I had, Alex had came in with another marketing company. Yeah. And she had done some marketing stuff for Growers Organic. Yeah, we did And some I loved blogging. her to death. Yeah, and there was, we had, we had, to, we had a, a, to deal with a little time frame that we had to part, but now she's back. And yeah. so, you know, I... Because one thing that Greg always sort of sets the standard with so many people mm -hmm. is, is like, are you working with growers? Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, we do, we it's, do it's offer. It's truly a part of the story. And when I see great businesses, products, and people that are doing, and I know and I trust them, that when I see that they're working with a restaurant or other people, then I know, okay, they've got the standard. It's so funny. That's yeah. all it takes. And I tell people that all the time. I'm yeah. like, oh, I worked with Growers Organic or... Uh, one of my clients, the regional, he's yeah. in Fort Collins now, but he was in Avanti. Kevin Grossi is super involved with a lot of the chefs, and he was my first client, and he was a good friend of mine, and he knew, like, all it took was me being like, I'm working with Kevin, and they were like, oh, okay. Yeah. So you do know what you're talking sure. about. <laughs> and a lot of times, there's yeah. nothing wrong. If you're sourcing great products, great people, great relationships, talk about them. Yeah. yeah. Tell the story. Every great business has a good story. Mm -hmm. um, Especially and, food businesses. I yeah, mean, and, you're, and you do that mm -hmm. storytelling yes, for people. thank you. Yeah, it's fun. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's super fun. So, The Fifth Sense. Yes. Uh, look for it by name. Great Instagram account, too. Thank you. Absolutely. We have a little fun. I have a free email marketing series, too, called 5-Minute Food Marketing. Of course you do. Um, talk about it for a minute. Well, I work with a lot of, or I talk to a lot of businesses who know they need this stuff, but they're just not there yet financially, which I totally get. When I started, I didn't hire anyone to help me with mm -hmm. anything. I did it all myself. So um, that's kind of my entry level thing. You can sign up for the emails. You get them once a week. They teach you about branding and social media and all that kind of stuff. Um, Kind of the next level is I give you a plan and you do it yourself. That's for the, like, my wife does the Instagram, so but I can't fire my wife. So smart. So I'm like, well, here's all the tools your wife sure. needs. Um, and then there's most of the people are like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to think about it. Like, can I just text you pictures and pass it off? Call you once a week and take a breath knowing that say, this is being taken care of. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I will do that. Um, we're going to switch gears to chow. I'm just going to do the setup and then we're going to. Take a break, come back, and start fresh. Yes, as, please. As I'd we swing. Love to talk about Chow. So, Chow, a passion project of your. First of all, just uh, describe Chow in, you know, a, a minute. Totally. So, Rich did a good job earlier. Um, it stands for Culinary Hospitality Outreach and Wellness. Um, we have once a week meetings um, where people in the hospitality industry will take servers, back of house, front of house, bartender, I don't care what you do. I mean, I'm a food writer and they accept me. Um, so, we get together once a week and just talk about all of the stress that everyone seems to share in this industry. Um, I can tell a little bit after the break about how we started it. But I love it. And joining us in this next segment as well, if you don't mind, is Chef J.P. Krause. I love J.P., of Chef course. Chef J.P. Everyone loves J.P. Uh, yeah, he's a, uh, he's a renaissance man, uh, a bon vivant, a world traveler, there and we a go. vegan. We yeah, won't hold vegan. that against you. Yep. Power lifter. <laughs> we love you anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> meat, man. Meat is good. Huh? I don't know. It's V-game Thanksgiving <laughs> with all these muscles. V-game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chef JP, he's, uh, 
he, he sends out, and you haven't done it in a while, some ins inspirational videos of like, you know, you're in the kitchen all day long. You're working, you're doing these things, and what's your outlet? What, what's your escape? What are you doing to keep yourself healthy, yes. JP? I mean, I go work out all the time. I actually went to Skate City with my kids this morning, so two hours on my rollerblades keeping up with them. So. Roller blades? Why wouldn't you go old school, my friend? Yeah, I got the, the roller skates. blades. They're uh, about 20 years uh, old. They <laughs> still work. That, those are old school now. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I took my snowboard to the skating rink, and it didn't work out too well, but they pulled me along. The point of the matter is, is that and when we come back and we return, we have a lot of hospitality people that watch and listen to the show. I think it's really important to uh, recognize yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. Be true to yourself. Of where, where are you at in life? What are you doing? Are you giving too much? Are you, by that giving, are you, uh, is, there, is there a void? Is there an emptiness? Is there something that needs to be filled? And I think that there, there are like-minded people with tangible ways of uh, exercising these, um, and I'll, I'll just say, these demons inside of you that haunt you mm -hmm. um, day in and day out. And addressing those things alone can be a very daunting task. Um, just knowing that other people are in your corner and that you're able to um, not only reach out for help, but just get some fundamental tips of this, this might mm -hmm. be something that could help you. I'm not you. I can't tell you what's going to help you, but we can talk. And that's the conversation I would like to have mm -hmm. next right here on the Modern Eater Show. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. Hi, I'm Charlie Gotten Kenny, brewmaster at Brews Beers in Denver. Fall's finally here, and for me, that means it's time to cozy up to a Brews Beer and get into some rich fall flavors. Never? Belgian-style doubles, pumpkin spice brown ale, rich dark quadruples, and tasty triples are perfect for cooler weather. We make nothing but badass Belgian-style beers. Check out our social media reviews, then come in and see what everyone's talking about. We're at 67th and Pecos in North Denver, about 10 minutes north of downtown. With the holidays coming up, we'll soon be releasing some very special beers, including our famous Belgian-style champagne beer. Planning a holiday party or family get-together? Brews Beers has everything you need to make it a great event. Bruce Beers, spelled B-R-U-Z, 1675 West 67th Avenue in Denver. Check us out at BrewsBeers.com. We're dog-friendly with food trucks every day. So come on in and experience some Belgian-style badassery. Rocker Spirits. It's a distillery. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Do you have the goods? Jay Parker here for the Goods Restaurant. One minute. For a neighborhood restaurant that features gluten-free menu items, stop by The Goods. Whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, or even a meat lover, they've got something for everyone. Get started with the vegan gluten-free tacos, warm corn tortillas, wood oven roasted veggies, pickled onions, shaved radish, tomatillo, fresh cilantro, and a house-made vegan sour cream. Wow! How about the best burger on planet Earth? One half pound of Aspen Ridge beef, lettuce, tomato, pickles, and never any hormones, antibiotics, or steroids. I recommend getting the crispy rosemary fries as a friendly neighborhood rep drink dinner brunch and full bar with two daily happy hours they truly care about you the customer and desire to provide an extraordinary dining experience for everyone they are family and children friendly and even have a playroom for the little ones the goods a friendly neighborhood restaurant who offer a wide menu of gluten-free vegetarian Y'all, I'm going to step out for two minutes as soon as I get you guys back Oh, on. my I'll goodness. Staff that really kicked. Don't swear, whatever you do. Directly no connected to the tattered cover. <laughs> That's Hungry? TheGoodsRestaurant.com. No com. swearing. My name is right back. Owner of D-Bar, and you're listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. You're hot. Okay, we're up. Thanks, Keegan Gerhardt. You are listening to The Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio, live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, as we continue uh, down the home stretch. Yeah, see, we're just proving we're a kitchen, man. That. I mean, that's good. Set that anywhere. That's. Fun. I told him to do that. 
I told him to do that. Holidays, boy, jeez, these holidays. I'll tell you what, I have a hard enough time with winter. I just don't like it. Yeah, you've been a little blue. I mean, been down. I mean, not, I mean but I have to make an effort. Is this con- seasonal, Greg? I have is this to every make year a conscious the same or? effort. I, I need to make it. That's why I sneak away to Florida a little bit. You know, I, 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 I need that sunshine. You, ha- you have to be proactive. You have to be proactive with your mind. As we continue, Greg Holland back, uh, Jay Parker off running around with a camera, Brian Freeman, Little Rich Schneider, and Alex Palmerton as we talk about chow. J.P. Krause with us as well, the president of the Colorado Chefs Association. Let's just dig in, guys. And, and, and this is not about me, but I think that it's important to talk about yourself and your stories um, of what you're feeling. Because if you can do that, I think there's a heavy load lifted off of you. Any more these days as I go into middle agehood, right? You're not a kid anymore. You're not pulled around by your, your family, your parents. Um, you, you don't you you choose what you want to do mm-hmm. at this point, and I, I'm choosing to try and surround myself with positivity. I I, I need to do that. Um, turned out it backfired this year because I said, you know what, all you guys that are pulled in so many different directions, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to go grab a prime rib. I'm going to fire it up at home. Whoever would like to join me can come join me. It's my deal. Nobody joined me. I, spent I, didn't even get I literally invite, man. spent Thanksgiving alone. Babe, and I invited you to I know you did, and, and you know what? And sometimes you just shut it down. Sometimes yeah. you, you don't want to do that. It's, it's not a boo-hoo. It was a decision on my part because sure. I like to duck and hide. Um, ducking and hiding sometimes can be good, but you're, you're stuck with yourself and your own thoughts. Greg, that's um, vulnerability, man. Yeah. We are afraid to be vulnerable because of the climate and the society that we live in today teaches us to be sheltered exactly yeah. what you did and and being vulnerable is putting yourself out there and doing yeah. something that you so, wouldn't do as my mom gets older and she doesn't have a desire to have people at her house anymore and wants to go sneak away i don't know furs cafeteria or what i think it was poppy <laughs> she is and, watching and uh yeah mom <laughs> and, and and i miss you and i wish we could have made some memories together uh and that's a tough one but it's something that that's very real um and, and that was a choice on my part. And, and, and I, I think I made the right choice um, because I can't be in the mindset of everyone else. So as we look into the hospitality industry, where a, lo- a lot of places, like Jay worked on uh, Thanksgiving. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, some people have the I couldn't care less mentality. His mm-hmm. family's not there. And sometimes I think, well, they're just not letting on. And... I can't dig into Jay's mind or Little Rich. You, you know, you kind of duck and hide. Your kids are in a different place, and mm-hmm. you know, you you deal with divorce and children going to other people's houses, and people are pulled in so many different directions mm-hmm. during the holiday. Oh. Alex, I, I'd like you to address what you've just heard, and thinking about Chow and our fellow people in the hospitality industry that give so much, that servitude, um, that that they feel obligated to do all the time, and when they go home and they feel empty maybe inside with absolutely uh, what what do you do with these things well what we've learned with chow is the power in realizing that other people are feeling exactly how you are Mm -hmm. um i mean we're not necessarily solutions based all the time like my co-founder john henman and i um talked a lot about what we wanted this to be when it accidentally started and i can explain that later (laughs) but um you know we didn't I mean, I'm sure eventually we'll have mental health speakers come in and have professionals come in, but this is right now just very like us helping us as an industry and getting together and finding solace and not being alone. Yeah. Um, so having like what you just admitted, it's really hard to say, right? You know, my dad died three years ago and this is the worst time of year for me because it's the time where you see everyone else with their families and you're like, oh my God, I know I'm not allowed to cuss, but wow, I almost did. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's a hard time. and. But, you know, a lot of people, this isn't their hard time. It's in January or in the summer. And um, so we're just trying to provide a space where people can show up and young people and old people and whether you're an executive chef or a line cook, you can get together and realize, wow, like there's something really powerful in just having a shared grief. Not to circumvent, Mm -hmm. but you just touched on something very powerful. A lot of times it's just hearing 
the struggles of others. I don't yeah. want to hear that you're in pain, Alex, but I also want to know that you're human. It's kind of and, a sigh and, of relief, and, right? And, well, like, it, it, and it truly is. Yeah. And, and if that's what's providing, uh, that Chow is providing for people, mm -hmm. is that outlet to say, you're not alone. Let's talk about our stories. Yeah. Let's show, let's show, because when you walk away from those conversations, you go, you know what? Gosh. We're all in the same struggle together. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but misery does love company. Truly. And learning from other people's mm -hmm. mistakes and experiences is really powerful. And like I said, eventually, like, it would probably be good to get a professional in there. But for now, it's just nice to have that camaraderie of, wow, this isn't just me. I don't just feel that way. I'm not the only one feeling like a total imposter in my job. I'm not the only one, like, wanting to come home and drink myself silly because I'm so stressed. Um, it takes a lot to admit that, but when you're in a room full of people who are all ready to be mm -hmm. vulnerable, it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah. And sometimes it's that I can't control the world. Yeah. I can't control what others want to do. I can't mm -hmm. control of how they're going to think. And I, I think when you probably hear the story of like, well, here I am, I still have my mother with mm -hmm. me and my father with me. And I wanted to create a memory and mm -hmm. I wanted it my way. Mm -hmm. And and theoretically, it could, it could have happened that way, but you didn't have that opportunity yeah. this year. And so when I, there's a lot of, you know, anger or grieving on oh those God, types yeah. of ends. To, but how do you put down that, the anger, the grieving, the, and just get back to that human platform of, of we're all just trying to go through the same struggle together and how do we relate that and, and how do we put a, a certain sense of direction and healing on that yeah. notion? Well, I think when you say get back to being human, I think part of being human is having those down times and part of being in a dark place is admitting that you're there and kind of, especially I've learned a lot about grief and studied a lot about it since my dad died and a lot of it's just a willingness to ride it out. Um, a lot of people resist that and resisting that emotion that your body clearly needs to feel isn't, it's kind of counterintuitive, although it doesn't feel like it might be. Um, so sometimes it's just okay to let yourself be sad. But in this industry, it's hard because you don't have time. You're like, if I'm feeling depressed on a Saturday night and I've got to do dinner, like, I can't deal with my feelings. Like, I have a room full of people. Or I want to see someone else happy. Right. That was the interesting part. You know, when this started, I, you know, after working with clients and writing about so many people, I've struggled with mental health and anxiety my whole life. So, and I've always been a really open book. Like my friend Brett would be able to tell you, like, I don't have small talk really well. So mm -hmm. I've always just naturally gotten in these really deep conversations with chefs. And I kept asking myself, how are these people that are so good at taking care of other people so horrible at taking care of themselves? Um, and I don't have the answer. I'm hoping we'll figure it out. But um, it's like it's crazy. the vicariousness. It's like um, as as you're seeing that man, I, I have a void. I'm empty, and I'm seeing there's a family, and I'm serving a table of eight, mm -hmm. and it's like I'm watching life porn. You know, I, I'm getting in. <laughs> that is such a real yeah. thing. It, it is. It's <laughs> yeah. like, and, and that's doing something. It's mm -hmm. filling. But then you 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 go home and yeah, you shut the door outlets. behind you. It's all about outlets. Right? Totally. Yeah, Chef JP Krause, go yeah, ahead. So obviously, you know, what do I take my stress on? I take it on my wife. I take it on my kids because that's who's in front of me. That's why I go to the gym. You know, lots of chefs I know, being part of the Chef Association, we all know the chef who hits the bottle all the time, does crazy drugs, smokes, whatever they can, just because that's their outlet. And that's what I think what Little Rich and what Alex are doing is so amazing because they're giving people a safe outlet, one that isn't destructive to their personal life. Mm. Because what you won't regret, I hate waking up in the morning and looking through my text messages and saying, who do I need to apologize to? Yeah. You, you, I mean, th those are really real tough things a, a, as you make your way. And you made such a great point, uh, Chef J.P. Krause, of, you know, it's the people that are closest to you that, that you really care about that get the brunt, the brunt. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. of whatever you're feeling and to be able to have a constructive outlet. And that's why when we were at the Colorado Chefs Association, mm -hmm. you guys had that great panel mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, health and wellness yeah. with with that. Uh, who, who's the gentleman from Ace uh, or not Ace? I'm sorry. Um, Vesta Dipping Grill. Yep. John Hinman, he's my co-founder. Yeah, so well, he owns Don Hinman's Bakery now, but he came from Vesta. He yeah. does so many great things as far as here's what you can, here's some yoga. Here's what I'm going to provide for you. Here's some, you know, let's do a week of soberness. 
Um, right, yeah. And, and the, one step at a time. And, just yeah. start. The start Secret somewhere. Sauce Restaurant Group is like the together by far yeah. and away yeah. doing the most for their employees right now. It's really amazing to see. Josh Wolkin is who you're talking about. Josh, okay, yeah. Josh. Um, yeah, yeah. He is incredible. He was, when I wrote, so this all kind of started because I ended up writing a story about it um, that ironically came out three weeks before Anthony Bourdain died. So it kind of blew up after. But um, he was the one I talked to because I kept talking to people who had had problems, problems, problems. And he was the only one I found who was like, here's the solution I'm trying to work on, but it's only within my employees. And I don't know how to grow it from there. It's 730 on 630 KHOW. A great conversation. I implore you, uh, Alex Palmerton here with uh, Chow and the Fifth Sense. <laughs> that and he just sneak that in and the fifth sense. Chow's more important that, right now. Right now. And, <laughs> and sure. I think we've really truly hit something tonight to talk about. But I think that there's more that needs to be done. Little Rich, I know you want to do whatever you can mm -hmm. to make yourself available. JP Kraus, obviously Alex, I really want to as well. Um, well can I can we plug when the next meeting is? That's exactly where I was leading into. Um, well, we have a website. We put all the meetings up there. It's chowco.org. So like chowcoloradoco.org. Um, all the meeting times are there. Our next meeting is on Monday at the Colorado Restaurant Association at 6 p.m. They have a huge room down there that they've graciously given us. Um, there's free parking. There's really no excuse. Every time I wake up, I'm like, oh, am I going to drive to the chow meeting today? Traffic is bad, blah, blah, blah. Just show up. You'll always be glad you did. Um, but they're every other week, Monday and Wednesday, um, Monday night, Wednesday morning. We're trying to catch people at two different times a day. Um, we also have a Facebook group you can join. You can, we have great discussions in there. People post when they're kind of having an emergency that can't wait for a meeting um, and get some good talking going on in the comments there. Um, well, Alex, I'd encourage you to reach out because Rich being a part of this, but other CEOs and other business leaders I know, in, yeah. in the industry because quite honestly, this doesn't only include, and I think that the people would like to know that from every level, whether you're totally. in the dish pit to out in the front of the house to, you know, to the top, CEO. it all, the CEOs, and I was lucky enough, you know, a long time ago as I, I've been a CEO for 15 years with growers, is, is that I realized that many CEOs, we all sort of feel like, are we doing the right thing? Yeah. Are we really... We, you know, a lot of people, you'll hear fake it till you make it and all that crap. Or can we stop? Or can we do more? It? But yeah, or can we, well, or can we do more? And what, what are the things, I mean, and I, I loved it how earlier Nick was talking about how he does outreach and goes and st talks to people. Because that's one of the things that's important at our, at our level, mm -hmm. mine and, and Rich's mm -hmm. and Nick's, is, is to be able to go out and to share our story that we struggled just like everyone else. I mean, I started at a farmer's market that was, you know, when I was working at a bar and working at... I, you know, I, totally. I've worked in both industries on both yeah. sides of this. And I, we have the same fears. Yeah. We have the same frustrations. We have the same struggles and stresses. It doesn't go away. That, yeah, we are all, I mean, we all, one of the things that helped me is just to realize we all put on our pants the same. Mm -hmm. One leg at a time. Yeah. I mean, and that's the hardest thing because we don't feel like that a lot in life. We feel like no one understands what I'm going through. And I'll tell you. A lot of people understand, and the more you yeah. become vulnerable, and that what I, that's what I was sharing with Greg about being vulnerable and sharing your story that, you know, hey, I, I need someone to lean on, Greg. And, you know, and I'm, I'm bummed to hear this about that Greg spent yesterday alone because uh, I will know, brother, I'm I reached out to you. I'm not on an island. I mean, it's okay. I but know. he shared it. And that but, was yeah, good. And, and that's so great because now I know that because he shared it, I'm never going to let him do that again. Mm -hmm. And because he's a friend yeah, of mine. I might want to do that. But you might. I'm not going <laughs> to let you, you know. Hey, my prime rib was great. Football was on. I had to watch the uh, commercialization yeah. of Christmas get jammed down my throat of what yeah. society should look like. And I deplore that. Did you, you know? watch the dog show, though? <laughs> no, I, yeah, That's I what you should have been watching, baby. I did turn to that. <laughs> Alex, uh, you're, you're doing great work. Thank uh, you. And, you know, with the help of... Uh, Little Rich, one of the things that I would like to say to you is anytime we'd love to open this kitchen up to you and Chow. I love that. And, That'd be great. Uh, that's, that's our pleasure. As we continue and, you know, you worry about uh, when we're in entertainment and we want to make people smile and laugh and be happy to address things <laughs> like this. People have gathered around and s started to just listen Yeah. yeah. because I think this is something that yeah everybody identifies yeah. with. If yeah. you tell me you're always happy, you're insane and you're probably going to kill me and I don't want to be around you. 
<laughs> you're like, yeah. are you This really? is real life. Yeah. And totally. thank you for tuning in to this. We'll continue. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and videos. Just search The Modern Eater or check out the website, themoderneater.com. Do you have the goods? If you're looking for a neighborhood restaurant that features gluten-free menu items, stop by The Goods. Whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, or even a meat lover, they've got something for everyone. Do you love a great sandwich? How about wood oven roasted vegetables on multi-grain bread with rosemary mayo and olives, vegan and certified gluten-free? Or for the meat lover, try one of their most popular menu items, the Paleo Bowl. With house-smoked pork, wood oven roasted veggies, two sunny side up eggs, and Indonesian sambal sauce, it's delicious. As a friendly neighborhood restaurant featuring dinner, brunch, and full bar with two happy hours daily, they truly care about you, the customer, and desire to provide an extraordinary dining experience for everyone. They're family and children friendly, and even have a playroom for the little ones. The Goods, a friendly neighborhood restaurant offering a wide menu of gluten-free and vegan options. And they don't... 150. Lovers with a staff that really cares. Yeah, less than that, actually. Connected to the Tattered Cover Bookstore. Hungry? TheGoodsRestaurant.com. Get ready to change the way you look at food. This is Peter Allman, the founder of South River Aquaponics and Alpenglow Mushrooms. As a Le Cordon Bleu train chef, I know the importance of quality ingredients. That's why in 2013, I left the fine dining industry to start a sustainable, organic farm. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow. Oh, hey, Greg, are you there? sustainable growing practices, utilizing our natural resources as effectively as possible. No pesticides, no GMOs, no funny business, just clean, honest food production. We use old world techniques combined with modern technology. Greg, Jay. Our gourmet mushroom facility provides CO2 for our greenhouse that grows tilapia as well as lettuces and herbs in our aquaponic system. Look for us in natural grocers, city market, and served on the plates of Colorado's finest chefs. At South River Aquaponics Alpenglow Mushrooms, we're growing greener. To learn more about aquaponics and see our products, go to our website at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. My dad's vegetables are so good, I can't live without them. If you've got a business and need a website or need a gra- 30. F. Johnson Design does it all. Take the headache out of trying to build your own website or design graphics. Who has time for that? F. Johnson Design will get you up and running with a professional and great looking website. Design sharp graphics to your specifications and have your site up faster than you think. Logo, package design, SEO coding, and more. F. Johnson Design did the Modern Eater's website. Go to themoderneater.com to check out some of their work. Reach out to F. Johnson Design at fjohnsondesign.com. My name is Alex Seidel. I'm from Fruition Restaurant, Mercantile Restaurant. You are listening to us on You're hot. on iHeartRadio. Yeah, why not? We can do this home stretch. This is a great time at Studio Kitchen Colorado. It's about being together with like-minded individuals and uh, a sense of community, a sense of passion, a sense of joy. Uh, this is what brings. This is what I live for. This, and I know those moments will come. So. Uh, just hang in there, folks, for the things that give you that joyous um, sense of, of just being alive. Just yep. being alive. Yep. Community, man, it. is what I call it. Community. I call this is like the community. Talk about community. Here we go. It's Tommy Knocker Brewery. I've been wanting this one for a long time. And Steve Enderhouse, welcome to the Modern Eater Show. Thank you. How are you? Real well. Real this well. is good stuff. You got a few Tommy. These are, I mean, my, the crowd favorites. I always say you got to have the crowd favorites. First of all, talk about yourself in your participation with Tommy Knocker. Well, I moved to Colorado for the job 22 years ago and came in as the brewery manager, pretty much weekends and PMs, and it wasn't long after that where I was pretty much just the manager, and I worked myself up to being the president. Wow. Congratulations. Can you take my picture off the back office wall that says, (laughs) don't let this guy in anymore? I, I just knuckle up at that bar. It's just, you go, I always say, if you're driving up I-70, Forget the traffic for a little yeah, while. Take stop. a break. Put it down. Even if you're coming back in, stop in Idaho, Idaho Springs. Go to Tommy Knocker, Tommy Tommy Knocker, Knocker Brewery, and you're going to have a great time. And we're trying to maintain that mountain town culture. And uh, the, the big city's encroaching on us really fast these days, and we're just sticking to our guns and, and doing what we do. How long has Tommy Knocker been around? 23 years. Tw- and you were 22 mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. You've been in for the long haul, huh? Yeah. yeah. Ah, uh, the beer. Let's start with the beer, the brewery itself. Where are you brewing the beer? Right there in Idaho Springs. 
right there. Mm -hmm. That's the, the only brewery right and now. And which I need a tour. Which microbrew were you as far as number one to number? I mean, because you guys had to be in the top ten. In yeah, Colorado, we were around right? probably, probably even a little less. Probably top five. No, probably more like uh, fourteen or fifteen. I really? Think. Okay. Yeah. That says something because but you guys, yeah, yeah. five hundred. Wait, hold. Yeah, another a brewery one just opened. Just opened right <laughs> yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> just this second. We broke seven thousand this week. <laughs> Did so, we really? Yeah, 7,000 7, breweries. So wow. you probably should have it right by now. Well, I don't know if that's possible, <laughs> but. We're, well, we're you have a couple to... flavors, though, that Throw are, out a are couple of huge yeah, yeah, crowd that's favorites the, for sure. Yeah, the Blood Orange right now is the crowd favorite. We, got, we figured out something early on with that when the citrus IPAs came out and everybody's using the fruits of, mm -hmm. the, of the different kind of fruit for the IPAs, and we figured out it was the zest. So we made a little contraption, we put, we hand zest real oranges for every batch, put them in this contraption and ram the beer through it and that's how our blood orange comes out. Can you capture the, I, I, when you say zest, I want someone to be able to capture the vapor that comes off well, there as, you go. You, yeah, try as you zest the, yeah. the orange. Cause that's, uh, no one sees it. And if you had a slow-mo yeah. camera, as you zest an orange, you could see the little, mm -hmm. all the little corpuscles break <laughs> off of that orange. Yeah. Uh, Steve's technical expertise is probably second to none. Go ahead, Richie. I mean, yeah. both, uh, I mean you, you, as you will we'll find out as you talk to him, yeah. when you start digging into why this is in to what degree, and, and I mean, how many GABF awards have you won, Steve, well, over that a, time? We've won a bunch of awards, and uh, these days there's a lot of really, really good breweries and a lot of really smart people, so it's getting tougher. Yep. That was an easy choice. You know, when I, start, when I wanted to make a, a chip and use some spent grain, and that was really birthed right there yeah. in, uh, right next to where they brew the beer and the yeah. nachos borrachos that we're eating tonight. But they, they've got an incredible story. I mean, you've got two uh, thriving, huge businesses there between the, the food yep. and the brewery. Yeah. And Steve's got his hands full. It's, I mean, it's, uh, how, how many people do you have working there? Uh, yearly... 80 people on an ongoing basis, on an ongoing basis goes up and down seasonally. Yeah. So brew pub, yeah, brew yeah. pub. Yeah. Hey, my friend Mike's here with us tonight. Uh, have you been to Tommy Knocker? I have. You yes. have. It's wonderful. I mean, you have to go, right? Yes. And tonight you, can, you had a couple of cream ales, and this um, blood orange, blood orange IPA. It's, it's amazing in front of you, right? The nose, a lot the of the folks, is perfect. A lot of folks say IPA. You know, it's too. This blood orange is going to get you, it, it's like that stepping stone, right? Yep. A lot of people say I don't normally like IPAs, but I can drink this one. It's not a bitter green, it's more of a citrus profile to it. And so when I look on the shelf, so where I go shop for my uh, liquor is the Glendale King Supers. And they actually have a real vast selection of beers. And I'm constantly looking for a good chili beer to have with tacos, Rich. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there it is. Tommy Knocker stands out, has a delicious chili. What, what, uh, what, what am I talking about It's here? an Anaheim green chili. It's a uh, blend of hot and mild roast. Oh, it's right and, there. It's and you know, it's not, most of our beers are in the drinkable version of the category. There's a six-pack version of the category. We don't brew to the top of the, the, the spectrum of every category. We want people to be able to enjoy a whole pint of our beer or a six-pack of it and not get burnt out halfway through a beer. So uh, our chili beer, for instance, that one is a beer that actually complements your food. You can drink it. The chili builds. It's a nice nose to it, a field nose. And uh, it's not the kind of chili beer where uh, you have one sip of it, burns your mouth, you pass it to your buddy and watch him burn his mouth. Yeah. So it's easy drinking. It's Steve, yeah. top selling. Because I'm looking at your, your brown, which I got to believe gets a lot of traction here in Colorado. Maple Leaf Brown built the brewery. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, but now everybody's had it a thousand times. And uh, the, the, the consumer has changed. It used to be you found a beer you like, you drank it now. 61% of the people that walk into an establishment, even if they have the best beer they've had many times, right there, they want something different. So you kind of have to be brewing for that next beer all the time. And you're covering the gamut as well as we bring Rob into the conversation. Rob, j and I know you don't like talking about yourself. Rob, <laughs> uh, first of all, introduce yourself. I am Rob Lanfear. And Rob, your background, I mean, I always like to say you're the restaurateur that I always wanted to be. Now you're kind of uh, <laughs> what, broken out of work. <laughs> I, one of them's true. You, just, you, you, you figure out which one's true. But a, as you're searching for beers, to, uh, Tommy Knocker, do you have an experience with Tommy Knocker? I, I do have an experience with Tommy Knocker and with Jay because when 
a long time ago when Jay worked for me, and he'll tell you that story later, which he tells everybody every single week I'm here. But uh, Tommy Knocker was actually the very first beer at College Inn that we brought on tap that might be considered a microbrew. When I took that over, I hate to say this, in 1998, I know I look like I'm like 25 right now, but uh, that long ago, uh, they were the first one we came in uh, and brought in on tap besides the Coors Bud, Bud Light, and all those things. Which was the beer? Uh, at that time, it was a, yeah, it, it was the, uh, um, the stout. Black Potter um, Stout? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. uh, which worked great for, for me. At least I drank a lot of it enough. God knows I was back when Golden Tea sure. was in town, and I drank sure. that all night long. Let's take a break and actually talk about some of the beers, because Booze in the News is the next segment. Booze in the News, all the booze news you can use is going to come up, and we'll continue right now. And Steve Enderhaus, I think I'm doing it right, man. Am it's I? good. It, it's not bad. Tommy Knocker Brewery, we're going to continue. We've got all of our friends and family here. This is the true Thanksgiving for me. This yeah. is the one I was waiting for. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. Mike, Mike Irby, God, I love seeing your face, man. Here he is. This is what it's all about. These are the people that I would have wanted to round up on my Thanksgiving. We have oh. like a family Thanksgiving every Saturday here. We're going to change this, though, right, Rich? Christmas. I think we might do something together. Yeah, we're talking about that today. Yeah, that's right. You two? Just you two? Or are you going to well, there's, a <laughs> there's a party. There's a party. Hey, Rich, who's going? Yeah. All uh, of us. Yeah. We'll continue right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. <laughs> Thank you. You have a live in two and a half. Thanks, bud. <laughs> This is Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. And I'm Keith Richards. The Rolling Stones. Stones. No filter. The Stones are back on the road in 2019. We look forward very much to seeing you. Thanks for being there for us. Tickets on sale Friday, November 30th at 10 a.m. at rollingstones.com and ticketmaster.com. It's time for podcasters to get the recognition they deserve. Introducing the iHeartRadio Podcast Awards, presented by Capital One. Over 20 categories like crime, comedy, music, sports, curiosity, and more. Cast your vote, and you're automatically qualified to join us in person for the first ever iHeartRadio Podcast Awards. Vote now at iHeartPodcastAwards.com. Capital One is the proud presenting partner of the iHeartRadio Podcast Awards. Just another example of the great products, rewards, service, and access to unique and unforgettable experiences they bring to their customers. Hi, I'm Andrew Moore, brewmaster at the Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. At Intrepid Sojourner, beer tells a story inspired by my adventures as a well-traveled archaeologist. My recipes draw inspiration from all over the world, from historical styles like Satis, Grazers, and Kvass, to adjunct beers inspired by flavors from international cuisines. My beers broaden the horizons of what beer can be. Explore basil IPA and Turkish coffee stout. Enjoy chai brown ale, taste lavender tripel, and the distinctive horchata milk stout. Thoughtfully source spices and herbs in... One minute to the live to indigenous beer styles. My sincere hope is that Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project will inspire adventure and wanderlust. Come visit the tap room and share your tales with friends and plan your next sojourn. Located at 925 West 8th Avenue in the heart of the Arts District on Santa Fe. For everything Intrepid, look us up online at sojournerbeers.com and remember to drink globally, locally. Hey Colorado chefs, Brian Freeman with Grower 30 to the live. Show. Do you care about where your food comes from? I do. Do you want loyalty from customers who are you guys there? I can help by providing top quality organic, pro- reliable, de- right. knowledgeable. Yep. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you have a 15 to the live. Okay. Okay. Food is grown, transported, and served. Chefs, Growers Organic will ensure you have excellent ingredients for your next James Beard dinner, your nightly specials, or your regular meal. Five. Join the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Okay, Small Business Saturday. I think it's a shame that Small Business Saturday has to get a delineation of a day. Uh, Small Business Saturday should happen every single day of your life. If you're not hyper-local, you're missing out. If there's a person, a product, or a service that's available to you in your community, I feel you have an obligation. When you look at a guy like Jeff Rourke and Kristen Rourke from A Plus Beverage Solutions, they're a local family-owned business. And they're making sure that you get the best quality tap lines installed in your brewery, your restaurant, your bar, and also doing maintenance. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Bever Solutions, this is the kind of guy that you want to come into your business because he's going to tell you straight up, 
He's going to tell you this is A, B, and C that you need to do to get an A-plus on your report card. You need an A-plus report card because the brewer wants their beer to taste just like it was intended to taste straight from the brewery. If you're pouring in efficient beer, what are you doing, boys? You're, you're pouring, pouring your money, money down, down the, the drain. drain. Don't pour your money down the drain. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke in A-plus beverage solutions. He's going to make your dream come true, whether it's a custom install or just maintenance to make sure that you're not that tacky person that has your employees behind the bar pouring beer into a big pitcher. The foam comes billowing out the top and then you take a spoon and you push it out into the sink and then you pour it in the temperature changes into the next glass uh, it's just tacky it's terrible people aren't going to come back to your establishment 720 272-272-3809 720-272-3809 it's jeff rourke and a plus beverage solutions hey it's great Back for gluten-free things. Are you intolerant or sensitive to gluten? Or maybe you're a gluten-free lifestyler? Is your menu limited because you've eliminated gluten from your diet? Are you missing the taste of foods that traditionally contain gluten? What if I told you that you can add breads, pizzas, muffins, cakes, cookies, waffles, croissants, English muffins, the list goes on right back to your menu. Gluten-Free Things is a local gluten-free and vegan bakery that reintroduces you to the foods you love. Owner John Irvin believes gluten-free shouldn't taste like the box that it's packaged in. Trust me when I tell you the products from his bakery in Arvada are fresh, flavorful, and masterly crafted, leaving you with a product that tastes like the real thing. Simply delicious. The bakery is located in Arvada on 64th and Sims across the street from Arvada West comments? High School. Check out their website at glutenfreethings.com. You'll be amazing. 20 seconds. Trey, what's the name? Gluten free products. If they you make, ever see that live, not before the liner, that, that was a mistake. Make sure it's right before the come in. Things.com. That's in the region. Oh, okay. I actually moved it out of the last break because uh, I wasn't getting anything back from you guys. Oh, so no sweat. Thank you. Which one? Sorry about that. Th th All right, stand by. It's stand by. Thing. Right, we're coming back right here. It's, uh, now it's time for the beer. Modern Eaters Booze in the News segment. I like my beer cold, my meat grilled, and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair and a, and a cooler beer. Here's your booze news. Oh, yeah. Booze in the news. All the booze news you can use right here on the Modern Eater Show on yeah. iHeartRadio. <laughs> That's right. Greg Allenbag, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Little Rich Schneider continuing with Steve Enderhaas and Tommy Knocker Brewery, uh, Tommy Knocker Brew Pub, in my estimation, because their yeah. food is just right up there. Um, and he brought us some delicious jalapeno. Bacon-wrapped jalapeno papas. People probably can't get enough of those. We do about 900 a week. <laughs> 900 a week? Mm -hmm. That's not individual yeah, yeah. jalapenos, Greg. That is plates. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh, really? I was actually thinking, how many is to a plate? 12. <laughs> 12? 900 is actually individual ones, though. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he right. was. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I stand corrected, right. ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> uh, but I think it's important. Let's go through the uh, array of beers that you have. Do, do you know, how many tap handles do you have with beers? And are there rotators, seasonals? Just go ahead and do Ro your thing. Yeah, we have 18 at the brewery. And... Uh, constantly rotating. There's certain ones that you can't take on off tap, like the Blood Orange is always on, the Maple Nut's always on. We actually have more beers than we do tap handles to go on there, but it kind of leads me into the interesting concept here of our Did, new... Wait, this sour, yeah, first yeah. of all. Delicious. Good. So, so delicious. There's so, many, there's so many things going on in my mouth right now. The front end, the back end's a little bit different. Yeah. The tastes are delicious. Please talk about this sour. Yeah, so this is our first of a series. This is the first public debut of this. This is going to be released January 1st, 2019, and it's uh, of the Prospector series. And for 2019, we're going to do 12 different beers, one released every month. More, please. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a beer that we actually used cherry wood that we had shipped out from Palisade, Colorado, that we fermented. Not too common. I don't know any other brewery doing that. So it's a sour beer, kettle sour, that's fermented on cherry wood. And it's aging right now in the fermenter on cherry wood. So this is the first time we pulled it out to show anybody. I would ask, is it a beer or is it a nectar? The yeah. nectar of the gods. Because <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I don't drink beer a lot all the time these days. I'm getting older, watching my weight. And uh, this, please pour me another. Yeah. You know, something else that needs to be touched on is how active in the... 
uh, Colorado community Tommy Knocker is to many, many charities. Can you uh, share with us a little bit well, about that? There's a lot of them. One of the ones that we're You never say no. Yeah. We pretty much trying to say no. We're pretty much everything local in our community, we support to some degree. It's just, it's just part of uh, the values of Tommy Knockers and hopefully myself as well that uh, we support everything, and the community is really important. Well, yeah. Easter Seals. Easter Seals is a big Every one. year, you're raising close to, what, over $35,000 yep. to give scholarships to families so that uh, their children can go to the Easter Seals camp. Hand, it's a really handicapped when, kids. Yeah, when the rubber meets the road and you actually yeah. have to write that check. Yeah, and these guys. To, to you guys. For but, and they don't even talk about it. That's a crazy thing, Steve. Please, They're please amazingly share humble. this. Amazing. With humble. you guys are doing great things. Well, yeah, we People don't, need to we know. We were talking about that earlier. We don't market very well. We pretty much just a mountain town brewery that puts beer and food out and burger joint and uh, we try to do the best we can. <laughs> humble. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah no. Hey, speaking along those lines, you know, it, it's not one person that does these things in this delicious beer. Can you talk about your brewers for a minute here? Yeah, we have a staff of five. Uh, we've been pretty lucky to be able to maintain a, a core group for a while here. Uh, it's been interesting transition because as I move out of the brewery a little bit, the regime that's coming in is a younger, more millennial crowd, thus bringing on these more modern styles, which, yeah. you know, I don't know if it ever happened if I had 100% control. Which is a plus, but no beer gets brewed before <laughs> 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know whether that's true. Well, or not, every but. beer is different, you know, these millennials, like, holding the attention span yeah. is a little bit tougher, but uh, it is a new, it's modernizing us a little bit, which is nice. So the one-offs, fine, mm -hmm. but the flagships. What are the flagships? Uh, these days, almost everybody has a few flagships, but uh, traditionally, most, most breweries, it's their seasonal. People say, what's your most popular beer? It's pretty much the next seasonal that's coming out. Everybody wants it, thus they're coming out earlier. Right now, our seasonal is our Coco Porter, and it normally releases December 1st. Can I have a little taste of that? Yeah. That's incredible. Believe it Wait or not. Taste that. How would you know, Rich? I've actually had that one. That's <laughs> and don't, one of the be, don't be shy there, Steve. Yeah. I'll take one of those, too. But w I want to go back to the fact that I, I embrace what you just said. Because as a business owner and the fact that you, you know, identified that you're letting this younger crowd take over. Not letting. And, I think it's an infusion that it, well, happens it's, yeah. very organically, right? It's a, it's a mandatory thing because that's the new demographic. Sure. That's who's buying. Like I say, 61% of the people that walk in to an establishment want something different. Uh huh. Yeah. You might have the best beers in the world lined up, but they want that one that's different. Well, I commend you for being able to listen. Yeah. Because there's a big thing yeah. there about this young crowd. Rich? Steve well, Inderhaas says we... Uh, Rich, you got a quick one? Yeah, I do. I do. Is in case people can't uh, head up to Idaho Springs. And what is it, 25 minutes? Yeah, drive. we want to blow it where, out of somewhere. Where in Denver, where can we find your beers? Give, here us, in one, the give us one spot we can just sell it out right the one now. One that's closest to Idaho Springs is Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks. Okay. Let's Youngsfield, blow it out. 30 seconds. Youngsfield. Right now. Yeah, Youngsfield. Go Road. get your Tommy Knocker. Say you heard it from the Modern Eater Show. Let's blow it out. Let's get a big order back through there. Steve, thank you for your time. You Thank Come you. back again, Gosh. please. Yeah. Yeah. please. What a community. Thank you so much. Holiday seasons are tough. They don't have to be. Check out Chow. Just Google it. Uh, it's right here in Denver for you. We'll be back here next week on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. CEO of Quicken Loans, American Home Purchase Lender. We've created a new way to protect.